Macaronis. Who were the Macaronis? Look at that little chap over there. A macaroni. The Macaronis were English. This is very important. They were the young English sons of the English aristocracy. And when they were in the late teens or early 20s, they would complete their education by doing something called the Grand Tour. What was the Grand Tour? Well, the Grand Tour was this. A bunch of these aristocratic sons would get together and they would do a tour of Greece and Rome and the great cities of Europe so um, that they could learn about ancient Greek architecture, which you already know, the Greek orders, etc. They could look at the artwork in all of the salons, and of course, they would look at all of the ancient ruins of Rome, which you know all about now, the Colosseum and the Forum, etc. It was supposed to round off their liberal arts education. Well, some of these young guys um, preferred to go shopping, especially in Italy because in Italy they had very outrageous clothes. And uh, these guys would come back to England with all of this fancy schmancy clothing that they had bought in Paris and in Italy. And they also brought back a food that was only available in Italy until they brought it back, pasta. So they would have these pasta parties where they would show off their clothes. Now listen, the macaronis were the most outrageously dressed young men around. Here is a contemporaneous uh, etching of a macaroni. Look at him, even by 18th century standards. He's outrageous. Look, everybody's staring at him. And I love that little kid there behind him laughing his head off at a macaroni and then look at the little toddler she's a bit scared she's bemused she's pulling at her mother's apron what the hell is that a macaroni now if you look at the guy in this etching and you look at the little macaroni over on the right i think we can probably ascertain they weren't perhaps the most masculine of guys but they were the most outrageous dresses. They had the highest wigs imaginable. At a time when the high wig was no longer in, the macaronis brought it back. And here is a lampoon, a cartoon, a satirical drawing of uh, a macaroni with his servant putting his uh, hat on <laughs> with a fishing pole. Of course, he didn't really have to do that, but they were making fun of just how outrageous these guys were. This is some macaroni clothing that exists today. It's very smart, isn't it? But look, it has a corsage on it. And let's give him a trendy little hat as well. So these were really the, the most outrageous high fashion guys by anybody's standards. And of course, they wore the most makeup. So... In the 18th century, the word macaroni, because these boys were called the macaronis, the word macaroni became an 18th century colloquialism for ultra fashionable to the point of ridiculousness. Um, uber hip. People would say, oh, you know, should I wear this? And they say, oh, yes, it's very macaroni. Or, you know, you're looking very macaroni today. It was uh, an adjective meaning incredibly incredibly overdone all right time to explain that mysterious lyric in the song yankee doodle dandy well yankee doodle dandy ironically was originally a british song making fun of americans during the revolutionary war the british considered their colonial cousins to be a bit gauche and unfashionable so now does that mysterious line in the song Yankee Doodle Dandy make sense? Stuck a feather in his hat and called it macaroni. Basically, the line means Americans are such rednecks that if they put a feather in their hat, they think they're embracing high fashion. So, <laughs> fashion is not an island, it's a response. But in this case, one of our most beloved songs is a response to fashion. <laughs> 